Welcome to another edition of Mark's Inspiration. Glad you could join me today. As always, got the D-Man here, and today's topic is going to be marriage and divorce. Yes, I like to inspire people, but I also like to give you the facts so you are aware of what you're getting into, what you're going to do, the challenges you have to face, and these challenges always make you stronger <clears throat> if you get through them with a positive attitude and look for the good in them. Because in all challenges in life, there is good. You have to look for it. If you have a goal set, if you have a purpose, if you have a mission, then everything that happens to you, if you're focused on your goal, your mission, your purpose, is actually propelling you towards the end goal, the result that you desire in your life. I know it doesn't seem like it many times, but it does. So let's go on to marriage and divorce. I had quoted the divorce rate in the United States at 50%, but what I'm going to read here today says it's lower than that. So that's good news for you if you're deciding to get married. Although I would not advise, advise getting married in the U.S. <coughs> Excuse me. Because the divorce laws are not friendly to men, to say the least. If you decide to split up with your wife, there's a really good chance that, well, almost for sure, that you will have very limited access to your children. Every other week, every other weekend, and maybe one day during the week. Okay, and also, if she has full custody, which most of the time the woman gets, you won't have much say in the legal matters when it comes to your son or daughter either. So that's something to keep in mind if you marry here in the U.S. Some states are more friendly to fathers than others, but in general, Across the U.S., the divorce laws favor the woman because the state does not want to have to pay to raise this child. So you will end up paying to raise this child now, I guess, until uh, they're 21, 22, if they should decide to go to college. And I will guarantee you, <clears throat> I've been on both ends of this. I've paid child support and I've had the kids myself. I have six kids I've raised by myself for over 10 years, as many of you know. Hey, welcome to my new subscribers. Thanks for joining. I'm glad you're here and hope you get value out of my videos. Um, six kids I've been raising by myself, and I guarantee you it's much cheaper and more peaceful and content to raise them by myself than to have a woman that I'm divorced from that has custody of them and I have to pay her, have to depend on her being there when I go to pick them up, it can be really challenging. Think about this, you get married, you have a kid, you end up divorcing. Your kid's two or three years old. She moves in some guy that's a drug addict or just how about she moves in a guy that's a good guy, regular job, um, works hard, he's a good man but he's not the father to your kids, but he has to play that role in the home. Okay, your kid is going to be picking up his attitudes, his personality, his traits, everything, the good and the bad. So that's another thing to think about if you're not around your kid and some other man is. Now, I don't think as a man you have to be with your kid every day, day in and day out. Because if you look back in history, the men of old didn't spend the whole time with their child. But you need to be the role model for your kid, okay? Because if you're not, somebody else is going to be. And therein lies the problem with a lot of young men nowadays. They didn't have any role models. They did not spend much time with a man. Or the men they spent time with were not their father. It was their mom's boyfriends or their mom's new husband or live in, or whatever it happens to be. But let's go on and talk about the divorce and marriage in the U.S. Here it says, the divorce rate continued to decline in 2018, reaching a 40-year low. The divorce rate was 15.7 divorces per 1,000 married women in 2018, down from a divorce rate of 16.1 in 2017. Now, I guess that doesn't take into consideration maybe there were less marriages. Possibly. Well, that's the rate. I suppose it does. Just over 1 million women divorced in 2018. But 
But I guess the men had a divorce too. Now, are they talking about the woman filed for divorce? I'm not quite sure what they mean there. Okay. Let's go on here and see what else they have to say. Uh, what is the number one cause of divorce, according to them here? The most commonly reported major contributors to divorce were lack of commitment, infidelity, conflict, arguing. The most common final straw reasons were infidelity, domestic violence, and substance use. More participants blame their partners than blame themselves for the divorce. There you go right there, more participants. Now I wonder, if you're a man <clears throat> and you get into a relationship and this woman loves you enough to marry you and things start going bad, you are the leader. You need to stop and take a look at yourself. How did you allow your relationship to get to that point? And I've done it, don't get me wrong. I've been married four times, divorced four times. And if I look back and take the word blame out of the situation, I have to look at my part in. How did I allow my relationship to get to the point where she was disrespecting me? I tell you what happens to a lot of us men, we become comfortable and we get in the relationship and maybe she wants to go out and eat and instead of you saying, or instead of you leading, you say, oh, well, wherever you want to go, honey. She wants you to lead. You were leading when you first met her, okay? Then you need to continue to lead when you're married to her. Sometimes as men, we think, well, I'm married and we got a kid and I go to work every day and I come home every night and I'm faithful. I don't run around on her and that's all I need to do as a man. I provide, I work, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I do everything I'm supposed to do. Well, was that, what, was that the man she fell in love with? The man who just got up and went to work and come home and sat on his butt on the couch and drank a beer and watched the latest sitcom? No, that wasn't the man she fell in love with then how do you think she's going to stay in love with this different man that is not the man you presented yourself to be? You have to be the same man that she met and continue to be that man, even when she tries to beta size you, and she will try to beta size you by a thousand cuts. It starts out with, well, honey, why don't we go to McDonald's tonight instead of Burger King? Well, okay, if you want to go to McDonald's, we'll go there. You start giving in to everything. All of her desires, demands. Honey, I want a new couch here. Well, there's nothing wrong with the old couch. Yeah, but it just doesn't go with the furniture. Well, honey, you know, we just bought all this furniture for the bedroom, and we really, it's not in our budget to buy a new couch. Yeah, but I want a new couch. Okay, all right, we'll get a new couch. So you do these things. And you think that she's going to like you more because you're giving her what she wants. Well, what she says she wants and what she really wants is two different things. That's not what she really wants. What she wants you to do is to stand up and be a man and keep her from destroying her relationship. Because most women allowed to run on their own means, so to speak, will sabotage the very relationship they've dreamed about. They don't do it on purpose. They don't do it consciously. But unless you stand up as a man, lead the way and say, no, it's not in the budget. It's not what we agreed upon. And if she gets mad and throws a fit, you let her get mad and throw her a fit. She'll come back in five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, maybe tomorrow, and she'll be okay. She wants you to keep her from destroying the relationship. Now, there's men that do this too. It's not just the woman. Once they get what they want, they just let things go to hell, so to speak. Now, it's up to you to continue to be the man that she fell in love with. And if, she, and if you're not being that, don't be surprised if you start seeing her gain some weight, not fix her hair, she's not using makeup, she's not dressing up well. She's reflecting back to you what you're doing. All of a sudden, she doesn't seem to be the woman she presented herself to be when you met her. But stop, take a look in the mirror. Are you doing the same thing? Your woman will reflect back to you what you are, how you are, and what you do. But now if you blame her and just focus on what she's doing, you will never see that. And guess what? You can't change her, but you can change yourself. As a man, it's up to you to lead. 
first off, you have to have a goal, a mission, a purpose. And it can't be your woman, and it can't be your family. I don't think it can be your family. <clears throat> your family's important. But your family has to be a byproduct of who you are. You have to be a man on a mission. You have to set an example for your kids. You have to be the leader. You have to lead the relationship. Contrary to what a lot of modern women will say, they want an equal partnership with their husband. That's not really what they want. See how well that works out. It just doesn't work out too well. I've never seen it work out too well because just like the United States, we have a leader, the president. When it comes down to it, the bottom line, what he says goes. Same way in a relationship. It's a small form of government. And it has to come down sometimes to where you as a man have to make the decision and be responsible for a wrong decision. That's your job as a man. Don't let it bother you too much. That's just what we have to do. And if you don't do it, she'll feel like she has to. And all of a sudden, she's taking the masculine role in the relationship. And you have to have polarity. You have to have masculine and feminine. You can't have two femin feminines together. Like if you're too much in your feminine as a man, that doesn't work if she's a feminine woman. So you need that polarity. There's polarity in everything in the world. Okay, let's go on and see here. What else we got to say? Uh, okay, what is the divorce rate in 2020? I'm curious. Divorce rate per thousand, well, that doesn't say. Let me see. It's about 39%, I think is what they said. <clears throat> Here's one for us before we stop. Why are marriages sexless? And that's a common thing too. Just because people stay together does not mean they have a successful marriage. I was married four times and I had success during the marriage. Now the marriage ended. Okay, does that mean I didn't have successful relationships? No, of course not. Many of those years were very successful and some were not there at the end. Okay, but does it mean you have a successful marriage if you've been together for 50 years and you're miserable? I don't think so. I don't call that success. Maybe you do. Let's see. Okay, sexless marriage. But even if there's no perfect definition for a sexless marriage, everyone seems to agree that they're common and they are common. Newsweek estimates that about 15 to 20% of couples are in one and sexless marriage is the topic of myriad new books and plenty of articles and columns. I know guys that have been married and haven't had sex for years with their wife and they watch porn, okay? What is the point of being married if you can't, how do I say, give pleasure to each other sometimes? A man wants to have sex. He needs that release. That's just the thing about being a man. And sometimes as time goes on, there is no sex in the marriage. And that's kind of the cement that holds it together. That's part of it anyway. Now, I'm not saying you should be having sex every night, unless you two want to, that's up to you. But if one of the partners wants sex and the other one doesn't want to give it, someone's going to go outside of the relationship to find that intimacy they seek. So that's something to think about, whether it be the man or the woman that's not giving himself or herself to the partner. So that's all we have time for today. I hope that has been of value to you. Leave a comment in the comment section if you want me to speak on something. Uh, smash that like button, subscribe. And again, I appreciate my new subscribers as well as my current subscribers. And bring a friend along.